Well, welcome to another Fish Eater Friday. Keep those questions coming because they've been very good questions. And one just came on actually a couple weeks ago, but it's not getting answered until now because we had the other important questions. Don't worry, if you send in a question, I will get to it. If it's a serious matter, I'll contact you directly, immediately, and give you an answer. It still might show up a Fish Eater Friday. So the question is, Father, where did you continue your seminary school after quitting the SSPX and became a priest? That's a very good question because I went to society from September 77 until December 15th of 1978. And then that's when I ran the problems which I've discussed elsewhere on my websites and I believe I've done at least one video that touches on this. In any case, from uh, December 78 until March of 81, I was working with the society, attempting to show my good faith and get things patched up. In fact, at one point I had been promised readmission to any seminary, a promise that was never kept. I began thinking about, all right, I shouldn't be idle in this time. So, I had been a house father at St. Mary's in the spring of 80 to show my good faith. And I was entered the Brother Postulancy Program, which there at St. Mary's, in my opinion, was a joke. But uh, there were a lot of jokes in the society, and I may uh, have joke day with regard to the society someday, but that's another point. So, the house father job ends at the end of the school year. I was also sacristan and master of ceremonies. And uh, there were a lot of vestments and things that had been delivered and stored. I didn't even know what's in some of these sacristies. And so I decide I'm not going to take on another job around here. The sacristies need a complete clean out. And so I gave them one. That took part of my day. And uh, the summer of 1980 in uh, Kansas was a hot one. We didn't go below 70 degrees for 45 days and broke 100 every afternoon. Didn't see a drop of rain. So my schedule was I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning, down to the chapel to uh, recite matins and lauds. I thought I'd better get a leg up on learning how to recite the office because someday I would be bound to this office. Thought there's no time like the present. Uh, so I recited the office and other prayers until 7 o'clock morning mass, then to breakfast. After breakfast, I was down into the sacristy until lunchtime at noon. After lunch, I would go back to my room. It was so darn hot, you didn't want to work. And so I took a siesta, get up before dinner, dinner at 5 recreation time, rosary date, and I went back to my room after rosary. I decided I was going to start into moral theology. I had two moral theology books I owned. I would picked up already. One was high school level, one was college level. So I did the high school level one first. I went through that one pretty quick. Then I picked up the college level one, Moral Guidance by Healy, which I'd like to someday see back in print because it is an excellent book. And that's what I did from about 8.30 or so of the rosary, whenever I got back to my room, 8.30, 8.45, until about midnight or so. And that's when I really started my studies. Well, in the fall, I was back to house father, and then things came up, and I had to go home and help out with the family, because uh, my grandmother had moved up with us, and she was uh, becoming senile and needed more care. And Mom was going down sick and other things, and then things happened with the society, so I was out of my studies. And when I cut off the society, March 5th, 1981, and resigned from him, I figured, you know, I'm cutting off all route to ordination. So there are a lot of things were going on that spring. That would take a long video to discuss it. In any case, I get somewhere in the summer or so, I, I'm stopping and thinking, okay, now how can I move my vocation forward? That, well... I can go back to self-study. I had already discussed this with uh, Father George Musing and asked for his advice. 
I got sales. Uh, so I s started contacting all the uh, independent traditionalist priests I knew, just asking them, what help can you give me? You know, anything from a list of books on up. I couldn't even get a list of books out of these men. I didn't get any help. I remember, this is before the Took Bishops came on the scene, so there was no apparent possibility. I didn't expect a priest to supply me with a bishop, but at least, you know, help me at least move forward. This, uh, the church will survive, and this side of St. Pius X is not the church, so the answer's got to come somewhere else, and God will supply. That's what I figured. So I was thinking this out. I pulled out Radko K. Jansky's Traditionalist Directory. Those of you who go way back are probably familiar with this. It's a listing of all of the traditionalist masses in the world, and including some old Catholics and some marginal. Well, I consider traditionalist marginal, too, as we've been discussing the previous two weeks. Uh, but in any case, what even traditionalists would consider marginal. Because he even considered Latin Nova Soro, said, well, it's not really that great, but maybe you could, you know, fulfill the uh, obligation of keeping Sunday holy, which I didn't quite understand that. In any case, there were uh, four bookstores I found in the United States listed in there, because he listed any resource a traditionalist might want that he knew of. I wrote all four, two replied back. Catholic Library Sources in uh, Chicago, and Christian Classics on the East Coast. They had a used book department back then. Both of these resources are gone now, but there are lots of other places you can find books now. Plus, there are a ton of books now back in the print that were totally unavailable at that time. So I get in the two book lists for the two places, because they each put out a book list, you know, whatever. That was always, you get the mail, oh boy, a book list. So I couldn't, I didn't have a list of books, didn't have anything. So I just dove in and started looking through. And I ordered a bunch of books. Between uh, 1981 and 1984, I spent about $3,000 to $4,000 on books. Building the core by now, I'm thinking it's going to be about 3,000 books when I get the good stuff all moved over here to Topeka. I'm still moving books. And the first box of books comes in. So it's time to start studying. So I kind of made a deal with God. Not tempting God, but just made a deal with him. God, I've got the books. I'm trying to find guidance in which ones I should stay, which one I'm not. I'm not getting any help from anyone. So I said, God, I'm asking for you to help me get this straight. And I'm going to study. And if you want me ordained, you provide the bishop. And I dove into the books and just kept on studying. I studied from summer of 81 pretty solid until the uh, winter of 83. Let's see. Yeah, two and a half years there. And this is what brought me to quit traditionalism. was something I ran across in my studies. At the same time, I was also helped uh, teach uh, adult catechism, which I'll have to discuss at another time. That's a story unto itself, and demonstrates some interesting points. So, at the end of 1983, realizing that traditionalism is totally wrong, and that, well, vocation seems virtually impossible, I kind of slacked off my studies. I didn't quit studying. I didn't quit acquiring books, either. See a good book? I'd buy it. Uh, Catholic Library Sources went out of business, I think, not too long after that. And uh, John Parrott and Francis Panikel, actually, they took over from someone else who started up a book business in about mid-1980s. They eventually become Preserving Christian Publications. They still do their used books. And you can go online and... And you can get their catalog, although I haven't received a catalog from them in a long time, but I haven't ordered from them in years either. When catalog comes in, I do check, and if I see something I need, uh, you'll fill out my library, because it's easy to get, you know, five of a ten-volume set or something, or six or eight 
and I'm still trying to complete sets, and I should check that out as I'm moving books and say, oh, let's see if I can find this. In any case, I continued my studies not as much through the mid-1980s until September 8th, 1987, when I realized we could elect a pope, and I thought, well, vocation is back on. All right, all I have to do is, after we elect a pope, present myself to the pope and say, do you think I'm priest material or not? Because that's not my judgment. Okay? That's the judgment of the church's officials. I thought, well, you can't go in unprepared. So it's back to hitting the books. Good news was, by that time, I had a lot of books. Plus, I had to be getting into the canon law books and the theology books to determine how we could elect a pope. So I believed it was my duty to put forth my best effort to help figure out how to elect a pope. I didn't consider it was my job to do the whole thing. If, a, if no one else did, I was, I was going to do it. But I was going to just supply information. I wrote some articles based upon that, and that even led to writing, Will the Catholic Church Survive the 20th Century? And then, of course, July 16, 1990, I was elected pope. Well, now we know I have a vocation. To study, stop. When you're elected a pope. pope, I don't think so. In fact, I happen to have right here by the computer where I'm recording a uh, book, Practical Instructions for New Confessors, which, uh, yes, there's a bookmark in the middle because I have notes to put on the computer yet. I have finished the book. I don't consider my study ends until they put me six feet under the ground and throw dirt in my face. Because the life of a priest is a life of continual study. We need to study, first of all, the science of the saints. And that for two reasons. First, I must become a saint myself. And second, it is my duty as Pope, and a pastor and a diocesan bishop have the same duty for their flocks, to teach their flocks how to become saints. So I'm supposed to be teaching you how to become a saint. I'm not sure if I'm doing it through this vlog as much as I should, but that's my duty. So I am continually looking for new books, going back to the old books in my library, going back to books, for instance, uh, one I picked up back in the early 80s. I just read a few years ago. Because that was one of the things when I started, launched into buying books, I knew that there were books that were suspect prior to 1958. True, I would, I, it was before 1958 and it looked good, I bought it. But I didn't necessarily trust it. And so, especially in the spiritual life, I decided, I'm going to stick with the saints. The saints have made it. Who knows better the road to heaven than a saint? In the 80s, it was very difficult to find books by saints. But uh, these other books, well, some of them were in use in the Society of St. Pius X, and I saw the sh spiritual shipwrecks there. And I thought, maybe the book is good. In fact, one of them I had actually studied out of a bit. When in seminary, when I acquired it, and I kind of remember it was good, but I thought, I don't know. Those books I have pulled out more recently are acquired, because some of them I didn't own. I knew they were in use. I didn't own them. And I have studied them cover to cover because they find out they are good. And they go back to the same place I was going. I went straight to the saints because I want to be careful. Because I've only got one soul. I don't want to lose the darn thing. <laughs> so I've got to get the best advice there. In theology and canon law, I thought it was a little bit more, it was a little bit more difficult. And especially when I read in uh, Woodward's canon law, which I already owned, about uh, Henry Densger's uh, Incredian Symbolorum, the sources of Catholic dogma. I remember that had to be 1981, probably, probably like 1982, because I remember as soon as I read about that, I was uh, placing an order of Christian classics who also had a search service, which was excellent. Unfortunately, the man who ran that whole operation died in the late 1980s. And that beautiful resource was lost. Well, I'm either paying a bill or putting in an order. Probably putting in an order. Because he sat with the council and said, 
I mean, you know, I said, order your books, put in your search requests, we'll ship you what's available, because I mean, it was first come, first serve, and then we'll bill you every once in a while. Worked for me. Catholic Library Resources was different. You send in an order and a check, you got back a box and a refund for what it already sold before you. So I'm singing this, and I said, I want the sources of Catholic Dogma. You know, I gave all the details. I think it took him a year to find me a copy, because it was out of print at the time which was unfortunate. But I knew when I had resources like that, now we've got official church teachings. If I have a question, I'd go in there and check it against the resources. If I think someone is uh, trying to feed me some modernism or stuff, I'd go back to what the church teaches, which is another excellent book. It's kind of a simpler condensation of the source of Catholic dogma, which I did have that in my library already. And I think by then someone had reprinted Although I acquired an original, because at the time I didn't trust reprints. I had found trouble with ten publishers, and they still do it. I can remember in the late 1980s being at a friend's house, and I pick up a book on Fatima, and I'm, you know, I check the imprimatur date. I want to know when this thing's printed. Is it on the good side or bad side? Like 1942 imprimatur, so I'm flipping through. Pope Paul, hold it just a darn minute. A 1942 imprimatur is not going to talk about Pope Paul VI. He wasn't yet claiming to be Pope. <laughs> and that someone has monkeyed with this. They slid something underneath an imprimatur. And I found other books in trouble, but that's another story. So, if you ask where I studied after I left the society, it was self-study, uh, asking the Holy Ghost for guidance because I could not get any human guidance. And so I hope that answers your question on this Fish Eater Friday. God bless you all. Enjoy the fish.